Good Monday afternoon. I'm Jerry Miller. Welcome to the I Love Seville show. Thank you kindly for joining us. It's absolutely our pleasure to connect with you guys through the I Love Seville network. We're live in Charlottesville, Almoral County, Central Virginia, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world. And today's story, today's show, we showcase the the evolution and the success of a businesswoman in Charlottesville and Stephanie Raglan. Her career and her path as an entrepreneur who's making Charlottesville and Central Virginia a better place for all of us. We're going to spotlight her journey. We're going to talk about Charlottesville and what she loves about this Central Virginia community, showcase her evolution as a businesswoman, and then touch on Charlottesville and where we need to continue going as a community to head in the right direction. Before we welcome Stephanie to the program, let's thank some of our clients for being a part of the show. We are an advertising agency at VMV Brands and I Love Seville, 113 clients on our roster as of this morning, and two of our favorites, Interstate Pests and Service Companies and Scott Wagner Chiropractic and Sports Medicine. We represent all aspects of their brand. First, Interstate. The business started in 1969 with the first generation, Mr. Robert Wells. He used his personal truck and sweat equity to build a company. Today, Interstate has almost 100 team members and a Commonwealth-wide working footprint. For that, we salute them for making the community better, just like Stephanie Raglan. Scott Wagner also making the community better through chiropractic care, sports medicine, and physical therapy. Dr. Wagner has your back. So does Stephanie Raglan. Uh, Judah Wickhauer, you are the director, my friend, studio camera. And let's welcome her to the show. You already getting some props from some people like Ethel Mallory, like Randall Johnson watching right now. Stephanie, good afternoon. How are you? Fine, Jerry. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. Um, introduce to the world who you are and what your passions, your hobbies, and, and your interests are. So first, my name is Stephanie Ragley. I'm really from Louisa, Virginia. Grew up there. Um, I left Charlotte, I mean, Louisa in 92 and came to Charlottesville. Um, as in Louisa, I came from a large family. My mother and father had 15 kids. Wow. Nine girls and six boys. Get out of town. Yes. Yeah, so we were raised in a good, happy home. Um, my mother and father were two hardworking parents, so it rubbed off on us. So we were taught to get what you want and work hard for what you want, and that stuck with me. Um, came to Charlottesville in 92, um, did a little bit of here and there um, jobs, working at the hospital and transportation and different things like that. Um, I ended up having two children, um, single mother, so I had to get out and get how I live. Which and is grind. Awesome. Yeah, grind. Yeah, I Definitely. love that. Definitely. And thanks to the man above, that happened. Um, so during that time, I ended up getting a job at uh, Albemarle County Schools. I worked there for 15 years as a supervisor. That was a lovely job. It put me in so many um, places, meeting good people, uh, beautiful faces. Um, doing the supervisor job was awesome because um, I got to lead by example. And so I got to ask people to do things that I really would do myself, so that was fun. Awesome, great first answer. I gotta ask, 15 kids? What was that breakdown again, brothers and sisters? So it was nine girls and six boys. Okay, nine girls and six boys in your family. Where did you fall on the 15? So I was about the seventh kid. Okay, so in the middle. Yeah, in the middle. What is that like, 15 kids? That is amazing, what was that like? Well, we're like stepping stones, but we are very close. We always had each other back through the, the good and bad times. And it kind of is a plus because, um, you know, we always look out for each other. And then the minus thing is there's always drama when we get around each other. We have <laughs> girls anyway. But other than that, um, I wouldn't take anything less than that. What was like a, what's like a Christmas or Thanksgiving like when you guys all get together? Do all 15 still get together? So actually one has deceased, so um, we're down to 14. But, yeah, we all get together um, we all have a family um, dinner, um, exchange gifts. Um, so it's, it's just like a normal family. I love it. I love it. You mentioned um, early in your first answer, your parents instilled the value of hard work. Yes. Um, just mm -hmm. like my parents. Yes. Give us a snapshot into what mom and dad were like. So mom did um, cleaning homes all her life. So that follows with me. Uh -huh. And my father right now still works at Flo's um, Volkswagen. Nice. He drives the shuttle bus and 
you'll see him around Charlottesville. I'm pretty sure a lot of these people just watching have rode in the van with him. And like I said, they both were hardworking parents, so we had no choice but to follow right behind them. Uh, you're getting props from Janae Burgess. Um, Sandra Shepard, Tammy Cook Barber watching the program now. Just put a like or a comment in the comment section and I'm going to relay it to Stephanie Raglan herself. Okay, so you are, are, are touched by the hardworking entrepreneurial bug. Mm -hmm. um, you started your business career later because you said you were working for Albemarle County Schools. Yes. Before we get to the business school, talk to uh, you launching your business, talk to us about working for Albemarle County Schools, what it was like. Um, how the schools have changed, what you enjoyed about it, what you learned. So with Alma County, um, actually my school was Murray High School. Okay. And so I got to experience a lot because Murray High School were very close family oriented staff. And so that was like my family. If you were a part of that, you were a part of a family. So I got to interact with the kids. So the kids did not only see me as the supervisor of the custodial department, they saw me as a family member of Murray High School. So, um, Amar County is a great place to work. Um, I learned a lot from that, and it gave me a lot under my belt dealing with, you know, the custodial part of the facility part. But I got to work with a lot of people, and I always used to say, um, if I get my own thing, I want to treat people like people should be treated. And that stuck with me because so many people wanted to work with me. So the funny part about that is Murray High is a small school, but it seems like Alma County would send me over floaters to help me. And it looked like everybody wanted to come. And my supervisor over top of me would say, what are you doing over there that they always want to come and work with you? And it was just that I wanted people to feel like, you know, they were, you know, took in like, really appreciate for what they were doing. Great answer. Um, you already, and I saw this, again, I mentioned this off air, we struck up a conversation in the hot tub at ACAC. Sure now did. we're sitting next to each other sure um, doing this show here. You have the gift of human connection. Mm -hmm. People like you, you mm -hmm. make a room brighter, um, you're easy to interact with. I get the impression you just love talking with people and you get energized off that. Put that in perspective for me. So I am a people's person. I love people. Everywhere I go, I'm always conversating, talking about something. I don't know. It could be anything that I'm talking about. But it becomes something when I talk to people because I always used to have this saying that if you don't talk, closed mouths don't get feed. I've never known anybody to eat with their mouths closed. So This is I, a perfect example. I talk to people. Right? Yes, exactly. Because I had been seeing you in ACAC for a minute, and I just didn't say anything to you. And a voice said to me, Stephanie, if you don't say anything, how does this happen? And so I said something to you, which was a pleasure conversation, because as talking to you, I saw, oh, he's just down to earth like I am, so what's the problem, you know? <laughs> so I would just say, like, um, just dealing with people in general, always never be shy or ashamed to talk about anything, because you never know what the conversation could lead up to. I love that. And you know what? One of my favorite things is, it's just like walking down the mall or walking down the street, or if I walk in a building, just somewhere, and say, hey, how you doing? Hope today is treating you all right. Mm -hmm. How's it going? And just like make eye contact and say something and just like, uh, because you never know where the person you're coming across, where they're at in life Definitely. and what's going on with them. And you never know like how that little hello or at positive greeting can positively impact somebody. Throw that topic to you. Yeah. So people have so many things going on. The world is so much different now. So it could be just that least little word that you say to someone or that handshake or Anything that you do can change someone's life because I know me personally, myself, I have a lot and had a lot going on in my life, but at the end of the day, I still have that strive to do better and want better. So as long as I keep that in perspective, I think I'll go a long way. And I think a lot of people, if they keep that in mind, they will too. Laura Stevenson said our family and our kids Loved interacting with your guest at Murray. Thank you for spotlighting Stephanie on the show. Terry Stevens Kane says, Go, Stephanie, go. Janae Burgess says, Congratulations. Alicia Bryant, Congratulations, Stephanie. This is fantastic. Let me throw this to you here. You're launching your business. Mm -hmm. What's going through your mind? So, <laughs> what's the year? So, the year was this year. Actually, OMG started this year in May. Okay. And so far, I can be honestly, uh, I'm so overwhelmed and pleased with what's going on. I want so much more, 
But not only do I want so much more for OMG, I want so much more for Charlottesville because um, I'm a hands-on owner. Um, I work with the girls. I don't ask them to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. So when my clients see me, they see not only OMG, they see the person who invented it, the person who stands behind it. And I'm very um, honest and open with my clients and tell them exactly what I'm going to give them, and I'm there to give them what they need. When you launch this business, um, I throw this question to all our guests that are entrepreneurs. Launching a business is, is tough. It's scary. It's scary. It can be lonely. There's a lot, of, lot on the line. I mean, it is like, you know, CNBC and like Shark Tank and The Profit and these business shows, they make what we do almost like it's like a rock star life. Definitely. But it's like the opposite of that. It's totally different. We grind in. We work in nonstop. If the phone rings, we got to answer because it could be opportunity knocking. Yes. Throw that to you. Help, help educate the viewing public about what it's like launching a company. So, like you said, it's very scary because me, as my personal self, I worked at uh, the same job for 15 years. So that was my income to take care of me and my children. So when my children became... Um, adults, which is 18 years old and above, um, I said, okay, it's time for me now. So let me do something that I want to do. And I still was scared about it because I was like, I still got my bills. I still got my responsibility and I got to keep, you know, the income going. But I, I said to myself, if I don't try this, how would this happen? So I just got out, and what I did was I was in the um, I joined the CIC program. Nice community a, investment collaborative. Yes, and I love that program. I would recommend anybody to take that program. Um, they be with you. They stick with you even after you graduate. They're there for you. So that's an awesome program, and that basically. How I got started was that program. Um, I kind of had some ideas and everything in my head before I started the program, but um, I learned so much from that program. So then I just decided to, okay, let me sit down and decide what I want to do. I build a website. Um, I have a blessing as an advocate. Um, her name is Charlotte Welling. She sat down with me, and me and her talked about what I wanted, and I told her what I wanted. When I said the name, she thought it was the most... Uh, fantastic name she ever heard in her life and she asked me where did I get it from I said because we use it all the time and we don't even realize how much we use that name and so I just went from there um let me get some comments to you you ready for this sure your page is blowing up okay. you're blowing up over here Erica Childress congratulations um Scotty Stewart she is an awesome person Teresa Williams says, congratulations. Jacqueline Spellman, congratulations. Carolyn McRae wants you to know that she's watching. Gary James Willis, congratulations. Um, give it a like and a share on any of these Facebook pages you guys are watching. CIC, Community Investment Collaborative. We've had Lee Alberson on this show. Sure. We've had St uh, Stephen, Stephen Davis, Davis on this show. We've had a number of graduates from the CIC. Robert Gray who's come on this program. Talk to us about Community Investment Collaborative. So that program is awesome because they have so many resources that you can use um, there for you. Um, any question that you have, you definitely can stop by any time. I definitely do it all the time and stop by if I have a question or a problem. Um, they lead you in the right um, direction. Sometimes, you know, the class is nice, but they also have other resources that will help you. They even help you with grants. Um, I didn't have to get a grant, but there are people out here that need grants. Um, they do have those for you, which is like awesome because sometimes that could be a distraction to say to you, I can't do it because of this. So the program, you get to meet a lot of people and those people become your classmates because you get to work with them, you get to see them. They put you in groups, so you get to really know each other and something that that person don't know, you might know, and something that you don't know, that person might know. So it's an awesome program. Um, my, I, my life changed two years ago when I saw my almost two-year-old son. He's going to be two March 20th. Okay. Come out of my wife at Martha Jefferson Hospital. Okay, I'm sitting there. It was a long delivery. She was an absolute superstar. Um, maintaining the courage and the strength, um, as you know, mm -hmm. to deliver our son. When I saw uh, our little boy come out of her, I realized a couple things. Women should be ruling the world, because men could never do that. 
um, I realized that my life was about to change big time. Big time. Big <laughs> big time. time. Um, I realized that I didn't know pressure until a new pressure, like having a wife and a son to keep alive and happy and healthy and fed, all the above. How about you? Single mom, mm -hmm. two kids. That's yeah. the real deal. Yeah. So that made me mature faster is because I had two kids. And as be being a single mother, um, I wouldn't trade it for the world because it helped me to learn just how important it is in life to be like what you want to be, do what you want to do. Um, I've always grinded. I've always had two jobs. And one of the reasons I had to have two jobs is because I was a single mother. And two is because I watched my mother and father make the impossible possible. Love um, that. We never wanted for anything. With 15 kids, we never wanted for anything. Um, it's nothing that we didn't have that the other kids didn't have. When we went to school, we went on field trips just like the rest of the kids went on field trips. Um, so I give my mom and dad so much props and respect for that because they mold me into who I am. Amy Wigshorn, welcome to the program. Uh, one of our friends, Rashad Edward Bolden, Frankie Lewis, Ancha Andalik, Hunter Blackwell, Pete Mahan, welcome to the show. I'm counting 18 different business owners watching the program as we speak. All potential clients, guys, of OMG Cleaning. Angelique Hawkins Jenkins, hello and welcome to the program. Uh, I'll throw this to you here. The toughest times of being a single mom, the best times of being a single mom. So the toughest time is um, a lot of times um, my son was an excellent football player. So I, as a single mother, didn't get a chance to really um, participate in a lot of the sports. Because you were working. Because I was bringing the bread home for us. Um, one of the best things is now my kids get to see exactly um, what their mom was all about. And now they see me the way my hustle is. It's kind of like they love it because they it's kind of like a thrive to them because um, – I raised them good, and so, and I did it all by myself, and I'm proud of that. But the main part is just, you know, grinding. I mean, I have a, a real thrive for grinding. When you started the business and you go through CIC and you're going to market, you get the business license, you launch the website, the business is available to start getting clients, what's going through your mind? So when I first went to get the business license, of course, um, the name OMG Cleaning Team. So anybody just asked me what is the name of my company, they laughed because they were like, oh, I love it. I love it, too. And so, it's memorable. Mm -hmm. And we use it all the time. So, yeah. you know, even the good and the bad is always OMG. So, and some people say, I know we don't use God in uh, vain. I never would get, use God in vain. So I say, oh, my gosh, because that's the closest thing to it. Yeah. So... Oh, goodness, we can say that, too. but I mean, you can say, oh, my God, this is great. Yes. yes That's definitely. not using it in vain. Yes, definitely, definitely. In a positive way. In a never positive. In a negative, negative way. Right. But when I went and got the business license, I was like, okay, I got that. So let's go on to the next thing. How do I get clients? And so... Um, How'd you do it? How'd you get clients? Because so that ain't easy. No, that's not easy <laughs> at all. So basically, after I built my website... I got out, and um, me and one of the young ladies that worked for me, we got out, and we walked the neighborhood, and we put cards out. And um, Respect. From door to door, we were just went in neighborhoods. I parked my um, SUV, and I walked from door to door putting cards out. And I actually got some calls from people um, from that. And then basically it just went from there, word of mouth, is really how I've got, as far as I've got is word of mouth. And that speaks volume because whatever I'm doing is working because people are pleased and happy what OMG is doing. And, and Stephanie, I mean, I would get the impression if you get in front, you personally, mm -hmm. if you personally get in front of a potential customer, you're going to close that deal. Oh, because wow. Because you likable. You're very, like, um, charismatic. You're approachable and easygoing. I mean, isn't it just about, I feel like, you know, similar here, if I can get in front of someone who's thinking about using my services... I'm going to most likely get the deal. Definitely. Probably same with you. Definitely. So a lot of my clients, when I meet them, I be honest with them. I tell, you, tell them exactly where it started and, and what my potential thing is for them and what I plan on providing for them. So a lot of my clients, when I come in, it's just like I am a part of their family because they're like happy to see us. And they're letting you into their home. And they're trusting me yeah. in their home around their kids, around their pets, around everything. 
And so the conversation mainly which touches me is because they want to know how I'm doing. And I'm basically there to provide service for them, but they want to make sure that I'm okay. And so basically the conversation, if they're home, when I do come to their homes, you know, they want to know what's going on, how are things going. And they're always giving me something positive because, you know, sometimes I get distracted and I say, well, I want so much more. And then I remember that I'm a very humble person, so I know that will come to me. And so that just goes from there. And the main thing is I make sure they understand that, I um, don't want anything, will not take anything unless they're satisfied. So that's the whole part of me being so much involved in OMG cleaning team because a lot of that is not really brought out in Charlottesville where the owners out there grinding and striving to, to make it happen. So I basically make sure they're happy before I leave their home. So, you know, they'll continue to be my customer. I love it. Tom Bow, the owner of Take It Away Sandwich Shop, watching the program as we speak. Um, you're getting props from Ashley Twitty. Uh, she says, Latrice White, you still looking for someone to clean? Here's your solution. And Stephanie Raglan, Barbara Brown says, congratulations, your page is on fire right now. Uh, let's, Jacqueline Spelman, Anthony Rush, welcome to the program. Gigi Smith, Gloria Lewis, Pam Page, uh, just to name a few. Um, give it a like and a share on any of the streams that you guys are watching. I'm going to throw this to you here. When you launch the business, what would you do differently with the benefit of hindsight? So what would I do differently? The only thing that I would be, be different about OMG cleaning team, which I really don't know because the way I'm doing it now, I'm very humble. So I figure anything that's supposed to happen for OMG in the timing right, it will happen. And so I just basically just like let people know what I provide, which I do residential and commercial. So that's different. That's very different. Because not not a lot of cleaning companies do both. No. No. And the only reason I do both is because I have experience from both. By being in the school system, I did a lot of the commercial part. So I know about offices, I know about floors, I did all of that. And as a lady, sometimes it amazes me some of the work that I've done. And I used to sit back and look and like, I did that. What do you mean? What do you mean? So the floors, you know, we scripting and waxing floors in the summertime, getting the school ready for the beginning of That's the year. That's hard. Very hard work. Yeah. And it's very dedicated work because once you do the hour, you want to see a pleasant, you know, job done. And so sometimes I used to sit back and look at the floor, it's like, really? I did that? And so I'm like, okay, I can do anything because I literally script that floor and wax that floor by myself. But it actually gave me a lot under my belt because I find myself now going in the grocery stores looking at the floor like, God, these floors need to be done or this or that. <laughs> or if I'm, at a, if I'm at a door and I see the fingerprints on the door, I'm looking at that. So, oh, don't look at our floors oh, or wow. our door. <laughs> wow. Ours needed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you see that and you're at the grocery store or somewhere, are you dropping off cards? Definitely. I'm always talking about, I'm networking all the time. Like in the spot when I was talking to you, um, it's just like something that I love to do. I love people anyway, so I'm going to talk about that, but I'm going to clue OMG um, cleaning team in that when I have that conversation. But in general, just having conversation with people, um, letting people know that, you know, that's how you get in life as you talk. I mean, you really Amen. get to know people. That's good lessons right there. Caitlin Mancini, Roy Wheeler Realty Company, welcome to the program. Throw this to you. The differences between cleaning residential and cleaning commercial. So residential is hands-on with the clients. You're actually in their home. You're actually around, you know, their belong, their personal belongings. So it has to be a lot of trust. It has to be um, literally... Going to, like I said, coming into somebody's home, um, providing great service. Um, a lot of times with commercials, sometimes uh, you really don't have a lot of contact with the clients because, you know, it's a workplace or something like that. It could be after hours, so you're really not seeing anybody. But it's, both of them still have the same kind of thing in common. you providing good customer service to them and making sure their facility or their home is clean. Um, commercial, um, and educate me if I'm wrong here, commercial, the hours are very different 
because oftentimes with residential, you're doing it during daytime hours when maybe the client's not there or less of the family is there, could be in school, could be at work. Commercial, you're doing it often right in nighttime hours, right, when the business is not working. Um, so the hours are different. So the commitment to both, I'm impressed with because that oftentimes, if you have back-to-back -back accounts sure. or back-to-back -back jobs, you could be working around the clock there. Sure. So basically, um, my hours are set hours, but you know, I never turn down any work. Right, that it's I business. Do business is business. That's right. So you take whatever comes to you. Um, a lot of my clients right now, I do have some commercial clients now, and I actually do come in contact with them a lot. Um, like Zoom, um, that's the exercise place. I Zoom take, and barracks. I take you care do Zoom. Of that. Nice. Yeah, I definitely take. That's care a good of that. account. Definitely, definitely. So I take care of them. So I have different ones. Some of them I don't see them that much, but I always stay in contact. I'm always sending emails asking if there's anything that I can do, make sure that they're happy with their work. And I think that's what speaks volume for OMG Cleaning Team because, like I say, I'm the owner, but I definitely stay in contact with all my clients and make sure they're happy. How about this for team members? And I try to do this as well. Doing the work on the front lines, the hard stuff, yourself and like setting an example yeah You're like i might own this company i might be the leader but you see what i'm doing definitely so on the back of my t-shirt is that we treat our ceos we treat our cleaners like the ceo and the reason i said that. that is because i definitely would never ask none of my workers to do anything that I wouldn't do or have done because I've done a lot. And so sometimes when we go into the homes, they'd be amazed about how fast and how detailed we get it done. And nine times out of ten, they're watching me because I'm supposed to lead by example. So they're watching me. If I'm in there grinding and doing some of the things that they wouldn't expect me to do, it actually makes them want to work harder. And so I learned in life that definitely with cleaning that – some of those jobs can be hard, but with the work ethic and, you know, the kind of fun part about it, it's not as bad as it seems. Because I, I see a lot of people frown when they go in and they laugh when they leave out. It's because the work environment that we are providing. Neil Williamson, welcome to the program. A Angela Ragland says, great job, cousin. Um, Jay Bug Louderback watching the program as we speak. Lisa Fortune's watching the show. Shone Parker. Hello and welcome to the program. Give it a like and a share on any of the Facebook pages you're watching, like Luis Jones. And if you have any comments for Stephanie, just put it in the comments section, and I will relay your comments to her on air. How about this? Um, was it easy, as a woman, was it mm -hmm. easy launching a business in the city of Charlottesville? Well, you know, cleaning is a lot of competition. It's very it's competitive, very right? very competitive. Yeah. yeah, and everybody... Um, it's different, and that's the best part about it is because, yes, it is cleaning, but it's a different kind of cleaning. Because You're saying different standards? Definitely, yeah. definitely different standards because, like I said, one of the positive things about OMG, I, yes, I am the owner, but like I said, I am a hands-on owner. So basically, if any of the clients have an issue, You're they, there. I'm right there. So it's like, you know, it's not texting, it's not emailing, it's not calling and saying, I have this problem. I'm standing right in front of you. So we solve that problem before we leave the facility or the home. So that's the positive part about it. But the, like I said, there are a lot of cleaning companies out there. And I congratulate every last one of them because it is hard work. Um, and I hear a lot of people say that they have a hard problem um, finding cleaners and workers. And I can honestly say... I have a problem getting enough work for the people that want to work for me. And I think that speaks volume for me is because... You know how to of, treat people. I have to treat people well because that's how I want someone to treat me. So I'm not going to do anything different. So I hear a lot of my friends, a lot of people that I know are hard, honest workers asking me for jobs. It's not that I'm not hearing them. It's just that I want to get out in Charlottesville and get more customers and clients for more workers. Great answer right there. So you want to grow this. What kind of goals do you have for this? So the number one goal is I want my vision to be this white van with the big old face on it. The big logo? This right yeah. here. On there riding around and everybody. I love that. So white van, lights. your beautiful face, hands on cheeks with OMG cleaners below it. Mm -hmm. Would it come with the smell of Versace too? 
If that's what it takes to get more customers. <laughs> I love that. I hope that happens for you. That's one of my, I mean, I'm not satisfied until that happens. I have to have that van with the OMG logo, riding through Charlottesville, through the lights, getting a couple honks or whatever it takes to get more customers. I'm down with that. <laughs> I love that comment. So Charlottesville, I, you know, I, we talk about this a lot. So small business owner, small business owner. Mm -hmm. Both of us passionately care about Charlottesville and its future here. And I'm going to throw an open-ended question to you. How important is entrepreneurship and starting businesses and potentially passing those businesses on to the next generation and creating jobs to any community? So any community, but actually I'll give Charlottesville props because Charlottesville is growing. So it's like you close your eyes and then you wake up and then there's about five or six more houses of buildings built in so like a little bit of time. So... Basically, it's enough for, I say this saying, it's enough for everybody out here. So anybody that wants to be an entrepreneur, please get out and do that um, because it's enough resources in Charlottesville to provide, to give you um, exactly what you need. I know sometimes, like I say, it can be scary. I did it, so I know the next person can do it because I'm no better than you. I just put in my mind what did I want to do and that happened. Um, I got faith that it's going to um, actually blow up, but then in the right time. In the right time. And that's the best part about it. Does it make you nervous at all about how fast Charlottesville's growing? I mean, I see like all these technology companies coming, and I see all these technology companies coming, and they're hiring people from outside the community mm -hmm. to come into the community. And then I'm seeing like uh, neighborhoods change so fast. Like I'm seeing huge homes being built. So I go to a spot, Peloton Station on Temp Street. Okay. Um, it's right next to the Coca-Cola building, the old Coca-Cola yeah, building. Um, and, you know, I first came to Charlottesville in 2000. And seeing Temp Street in 2000 and seeing Temp Street now, it is completely different. Totally you know different. those colorful big houses that are on Temp Street? Yeah. The ones that look like kind of like McMansions? They're yeah. beautiful homes. Yeah, definitely. You know, th that wasn't there when I got here in 2000. It's completely different. What do you make of this change? Do you like the change? Are you nervous about the change? Well, it's kind of good because some of the places that we see in Charlottesville, we would have never thought that we would see um, those type of homes built on those kind of streets. But What do you mean by that? And what I mean by that is, like, it was a certain uh, picture that we saw when we drove down 10th Street, and that was okay, but... The way Tim Street is growing now is like interbreak, so everybody it's a little mixture of everything. So that's in a positive way because that means, you know, Charles was getting on the map just like everybody else is on the map. And so the more they build, the more advanced for jobs, more opportunities um, for business, um, such as my business, the more they build, the more chances I'll be able to get out and get uh, buildings and homes to clean. So the more the merrier. Especially for your business. Definitely. Your business, a lot of opportunity. How about the, the, how about the neighborhood? I mean, where do you think the neighborhood is going to go? And I'm just talking about in general. Here's another example. Is, um, I lived in Belmont um, right out of school. Um, and then when I lived in Belmont right out of school, this was in 2004, 2005. Okay. When I was living in Belmont, it was like, um, you know, the OG, old guard of Belmont, old school Belmont was there. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I was watching, I had no money. The only reason I wanted to live in Belmont was I was like in walking distance of meeting ladies on the downtown mall. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to live in Belmont. I could walk to Rapture or one of these bars, right? Meet some girls and then I didn't have to drive back home. So like I was watching like like no money, like early, mid-20s. And I'm literally watching like all these families flood to Belmont. And then Belmont went from this like very like working class neighborhood to now it's like $500,000 homes. Definitely. And it's because people want to be able to, just like me, walk downtown and enjoy the restaurants with their families or walk to work. What do you make of that when it comes to neighborhoods around Charlottesville? So the neighborhoods, I think, now are kind of like um, mixing up. And like you spoke about um, getting close to facilities, because a couple of my clients, um, they were doctors or whatever at the hospital, and they used to talk to me and say, well, I th I'm thinking about moving this certain way. And then I used to think back in the day, like, are you sure you really want to live there? But now how things have changed, 
it's closer to, you know, the facility is closer to the closer hospital. UVA. UVA. Hospital. So, yeah. you know, people are I got are a moving. friend that lives on King Street in Fifeville, okay? And, this, and, and the reason why she moved there is because she works for the hospital and wanted to be able to walk to and from work. Yes. And when she, first, when she first moved there, it was like she was a little uncertain about her safety because she was often working because she was doing 12-hour shifts. And she was walking solo by herself from the hospital to where she lived. And, and, and now it's completely different. It's totally different. I had a client that was in Crozet, and she was like, I'm going to move to Charlottesville. Is anything close to Charlottesville? So I was naming some places that I knew, and I was looking for her to say, like, well, I don't think I'd be interested in that. She never once said that. It's because of it, the convenience to where she was going, which was the hospital. Um, she was like, I just want something that's closer to Charlottesville. And then plus, it's building up so much that, you know, it's so much out here. The only problem I say is, for um, Charlottesville with the people that can't afford um, the homes and stuff like that. Um, I think they need to build more of the houses like for people that can afford them because I know I can't afford a four or $500,000 house. I would like to have one, maybe one day that will happen. But for those ones that do want a nice home, a lot of people have to go to the country because, you know, it's better to, you know, live out of there with the financial part affordable so that's the only problem with that but like i said charlottesville is definitely growing and like i said you see a lot of houses you see a lot of buildings building up so somebody's doing something right because you know we have a lot of places um that need cleaning and different kinds of things so that's the good thing about it what do you think about uva's role is in charlottesville UVA is pretty good because UVA is kind of big. It has so many um, pluses. I remember when um, I was working as supervisor at Boys Head Inn, I didn't even know that so much of UVA was wrapped into Boys Head Inn. Because doesn't UVA own Boys Head? Yes, and I didn't even know that, and I was shocked about that because so much of the funding and stuff like that was involved in that, and I was like, wow. So um, it's a good it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Like Charles say, Charles is a good place to live. Um, it's it's a good place to advance, and it's a good place to bring your family to raise here. Um, you're getting props from a lot of people. I'm going to relay some of that props. Um, this is coming in from Gwendolyn Gray. Mm-hmm. She says, great job, Stephanie. I like what you are doing. Keep doing what you're doing. God bless you. D- Delisha Renee, I am so proud of you, Auntie. The women in my family make me so proud. Um, Setting an example for the next generation. Do you think about that stuff? Do you think about legacy? Oh, definitely. Um, um, Sometimes I tease my daughter because, you know, she'll say, Mom, you do too much. And I'm thinking to my mom is doing too little because mama wants to be so much. So in order to be so much, I got to get out there um, and grind because nobody's going to give me anything. And if I I don't open my mouth and talk about what I want, how am I going to advance? like my niece was just saying, now the women in our family, like I said, my mother raised nine girls, and all of them are go-getters. Not one of them are slackers. We are all go-getters, and we believe in getting um, what we want because we had an example of that. We know it can happen if we believe in that. Do you think the next generation is as hard work? No. Why but, do you think that? Because I'm a country girl. So we, get to, we got to solve so many things. We, we got to see the impossible. We, we got to see things grown out of a garden. We got to not be able to go in the grocery store and just pick this up. We had to literally um, work in a garden and bring a tomato in the house from the garden. You know, we didn't go in the store and pick it. And so um, I was raised by my godmother, which was a hundred when she uh, ended up passing. So I got to live like on a farm and we got to milk cows. We got to walk around horses. And the crazy thing about it is right now, um, I'm just a little bit frightened. I'm getting closer with dogs because I got ran by dogs so much when I was young. But that was a good thing. But it's like I say, it's so much different. Um, kids now, they have no idea, no idea what it was to live in the country. How about social media and video games and how they're impacting young people? Oh, wow. Social media and video games. Um, you probably school- saw this at Murray. They, they're, they're definitely spoiling them because um, it's so much easy access. 
um, to what is out here now. I remember back in the day, it used to be ladies coming by my mother's house selling uh, encyclopedias. And and that's how that. and that's how we actually learn. got to learn things yeah. through that. But now you can go on a computer, Google this and Google that. You probably can cheat on half of your tests in the in the classroom. Probably can. Yeah, definitely. Back then, you know, if you didn't know it, you didn't know. You it. were screwed. Exactly <laughs> yeah. that. Definitely that. Um, you're getting props right now from Winnie Gaines, Pam Jackson. She's watching the program. Lloyd Ricks is giving you some love. Pam Page giving you guys some love. Um, I'm going to throw this to you. And, and a lot of folks are asking how they can find out about you or contact you for your services. We'll give you an opportunity to get the word out about that. We throw this question to all our guests. This show mm -hmm. was birthed because of August 12th. I was in this space okay. on August 12th watching what was happening on Market Street and saw awful, I saw evil, I saw hate, I saw nastiness that I'd never seen and experienced before. And that's my naiveness because I know that that exists in the world, but I just hadn't seen it up until that point. Okay. So I was in a funk and my wife helped me get out of the funk and she said, you're going to either see a therapist and talk about this or you're going to do something that helps you get out of this haze or this cloud. And as a result, we created this show where we showcase the best of Charlottesville, Virginia, the Stephanie Raglins of the world, who are working hard for a goal of bettering the community through hard work, through entrepreneurship. So the August 12th topic to you, what did August 12th, 2017 mean to you? Um, what it meant to me is we got a lot of work to do. And what I mean by that is we got to have a whole lot of unity, which is not nowhere near close to where we need to be, but it can be that way. Um, it was, to me, a day of, like, I didn't even realize it was that much hate, um, but I think we were in denial about that because it got exposed to us exactly what that day was. Um, I think that we all people... We all supposed to love one another, regardless of what the situation is, um, the good and bad, um, the better or worse. So um, I hate the fact that it put Charlottesville on the map where people, I go so many places and people will say, well, you guys live where me, they have that. That happens to me too. Yeah. How um, do you answer that? How do you respond? Everybody's not the same. Everybody doesn't have the same heart. So you just ran across a couple of people that had bad heart. That doesn't speak for everybody. So um, I kind of laugh when they say that because, you know, it kind of like it's kind of hurtful to that people uh, see it that way. But, you know, it is what it is. It was got exposed that day. But hopefully the positive things, um, the growing of Charlottesville, um, people helping each other, building each other up will people, let people understand it's not what they think about Charlottesville. We're two God-fearing people, and you wear your faith on your sleeve, and I love that. Mm -hmm. I find it contagious, and I find it inspiring. Where do we need to go as a community? Um, we, this summer is going to be the three-year anniversary. Where do we still need to go? Yeah, we still got a lot more to do because um, situations, a lot of people feel like it's so much unfairness. So I think building up together, um, people communicating with each other, um, more advancements for people, opportunities for people so they don't feel like they're being left out. Um, the resource to know where to go to when they have situation problems because a lot of people had a lot of situations and that's one of the bigger problems. So if they, I think if they talk about it, if they see that, you know, Charles will really care for them, then maybe, you know, that'll help. But that's in time, I guess. But as the time grow, maybe people will forget about that situation. It is a memory that we can't really deny, but it happened, but we can outgrow that. I love it. I love it. Okay, we'll close with a couple questions we asked all our guests. Um, I love this community for so many reasons. One of the reasons I love this community is I love food, love to eat. Mm -hmm. um, favorite spots for you to go and why? So um, my favorite spots to go is basically um, 
Me and my daughter sometimes we'll go to Plaza Azteca. Oh yeah, Plaza Azteca. That place yes. is legit. Uh huh. Their drinks are good. Yeah. Um, Chick Fil A. I know. I love Chick Fil A. You like Chick Fil A? Okay, mm-hmm. I like it. I, I like can it. eat Chick-fil-A almost every day. But um, also, we, we have some entrepreneurs that were in the CIC program. They have food places, and Angelique has a She's food watching. Place. And I'm very proud of her. I will speak there from one entrepreneur to the other. I wish you the best. Um, get everything that God has set out for you because he set a big plan for you, and I see you're doing exactly what he wants you to do. Um, Basically, that's it. All the all I can say is all the Charlottesville entrepreneurs. Um, I am proud of you. I am one of them. Um, I wish you the best. Um, there's so much more out here, and anybody who's trying to get a business or want to have a business, you can do it because it's a lot of opportunities out here. So go out here and grab them. Last question for you, and you crush it. And then let's plug how people can contact you for your business. You are. A successful, positive, influential leader in the community. You're um, having success with your vision. You're an African American businesswoman that's crushing it. Do you think about that? Well, I this is what I think about. Um, I had a vision, um, and I had some doubters. You didn't have doubters? Yes. Why would they doubt? We all have haters. Yeah. But the haters can be motivators. Do they so, motivate you? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I get up every day with motivation, um, trying to turn someone who said it couldn't happen, make it happen. Um, not everybody's happy for you, but that is their problem. So that doesn't stop you, and that shouldn't stop anyone from doing what you want to do. Um, me, myself, um, I want, you know, like I said, I'm a humble person, but in my heart, I know there's so much more that I want, and I have to strive to get that. And in order to get that, I gotta have the ambition to do that. And right now, I'm at that point that I'm, I'm really, I'm ready to get whatever's supposed to happen for OMG Cleaning Team. I love it, Sherry Raglan. Congratulations, Cassandra Brock. So proud of you, Cuz. Um, OMG Cleaning Team. How can we connect with you? How can we find you? How can we holler at you? So OMG has a website. Um, it's omgcleaningteam.com. Um, OMG, you can call me by phone. I answer my phone all the time. Um, that's basically it. Um, to those two, my website and my phone number is the basic best two ways to get me. Um, I'm looking for, like I said, more clientele so that I can hire more people because I have so many people um, think that I forgot about them asking them, me to hire them. Um, it isn't that. It's just that I want to get out there. But like I said, OMG is a very humble, humble um, owner. And at the end of the day, what is meant for me will happen. Is there anything more fun or more gratifying or more satisfying or fulfilling than creating jobs and and leaving customers happy oh my goodness um it's the one of the major things for me is i feel like i haven't done enough and the reason i say i haven't gained enough is because that vision i wanted to give so many jobs i want to give evening jobs part-time jobs for people that when they work that job they need another one and omg can provide that for them so until i get that happening i'm not satisfied so that's one of my goals to make that happen and i think i will make that happen i think you're right definitely time. gonna make that happen I, I, I think in very soon that white van with your face on the side with your hands on your cheeks driving around town people honking the horn you giving them props outside the window say what up what up what up honking back that's gonna be so awesome yep and people say omg Google me. <laughs> so, and then also, I want to give props to my girls. Um, the girls that work with me now, I couldn't speak um, no better words than I am so blessed to have the people that work for me now. It's nothing that I don't ask them to do that they don't do for me. Um, and I spend most of my time is letting them know and show them how much appreciated I am. I'm probably about the highest paid uh, cleaning service there is. And the reason I do that is because I've been there. I've done exactly what they are doing. And so um, that's no other way or the proper way for me to do is to show them just how much I appreciate them. Great answer. Natasha uh, Price, congratulations. I'm very proud of you. Candy Hayden says, claim it, girl. Claim Claim it. 
Um, thank you for coming on the show. Oh, sure. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Mm -hmm. I, I truly, truly enjoyed it. This is what we're going to do with today's show, guys. We're going to archive it on ilovesevil.com. And for the next two weeks, we're going to syndicate and spotlight Stephanie Raglan across the I Love Seville network. That is 17 Facebook pages, 17 Twitter accounts. We have the third largest Instagram in the community behind the City of Charlottesville account and the UVA account. We are going to take today's show and turn it into a podcast on iTunes and Apple Podcasts. We're going to take today's show and we're going to spotlight it in a daily e-newsletter that goes out to almost 130,000 email inboxes. And of course, we're going to archive the show on ilovesevil.com from start to finish. Together, our network across the board reaches a little over 253,000 people. Stephanie Raglan and the OMG cleaning team making Charlottesville better. Support the businesses that are making Charlottesville better, like OMG cleaning team. Um, we close with the same message every single show. We ask everybody who is watching to please embody the golden rule. Treat other people in your life how you want to be treated yourself. It's the golden rule. A very simple concept on paper, but a concept that is very much missing, not only in Charlottesville, but the country and the world, the golden rule. My name is Jerry Miller. This is the I Love Seville show. Tomorrow at 1230, we're going to spotlight Computer for Kids, a nonprofit in this community that is giving access to computers for people who don't have a computer at home. Computer for Kids. We're going to spotlight that charity tomorrow at 1230 on the I Love Seville show. Enjoy your afternoon, guys. Take care. Oh, that was good. You, shit, it was so good. That was easy, right? <laughs> it was easy. Good. You made it easy, though, because you're, you. you're down to earth, so that's